Well, good evening. How are you doing tonight? You're on with your sports analyst, Big J. Let's talk, and you know what time it is. We're going to talk about what's on our thumbnail tonight. The subject and the topic will be the NBA exploiting th teams through the art of mediocrity. Consider that I said through the arts of mediocrity. Anything that deals with manipulation or mediocrity, those things are suggested um, to be arts because you have to learn the devices in order to do them. And I'm going to point that out to you in a minute through the use of subliminals. Believe it or not, this has been the most craziest NBA season for several reasons. Let's go back. Last year, they had the um, everything was done in the bubble as far as the playoffs. Then we had um, it stated and said that this would be the worst rookie class in NBA history. It said it would be the worst ever. Well, come to find out, that's not true. This is one of the best NBA classes, draft classes that we have seen in a long time, led by LaMelo Ball, one of the best. And I think it blew the NBA by surprise, and they were not ready to capitalize on the names of the individuals who are setting a precedence and a standard in the league right now. That's right. You heard me. LaMelo Ball, all right, Anthony, um, before my man got hurt, Tyrese, Holliburton, and a couple of others. Come on now, Anthony Edwards is showing that he's going to be a superstar. LaMelo Ball is already there. The Halliburton was doing things that no one thought he was, would do, being drafted where he was. But guess what? They all made liars out of a lot of individuals. And guess what? The NBA was not ready and did not capitalize because of the logistics and the analytics that came back to their office. So they were unaware of how exciting this season would be. And I said I was going to share something with you tonight. And I don't know if you know anything about visualization. And if you do, you understand what we see for some of us becomes our reality. If that is the case, then if I put subliminals in front of you, like, for example, um, we have kids, right? Some of us do. And if you're walking, watching a McDonald's commercial, what does your kid say? If they're like, well, mommy, daddy, I want McDonald's. I want a Big Mac. I want fries. Why? Because there is a subliminal message through the commercial. My next point. When did the NBA start celebrating mediocrity? I, I don't remember a time. Because if that's the case, there's no way that the Lakers would have the number of championships that they have and Boston would have the number of championships that they have. Why? Because mediocrity was never celebrated. So what we have to do is remember that what's going on now is very, very different from the past. That's my grandson in the studio with me. So just bear with him. I allow him to see and understand so he can learn what's going on. I think it's vital to this generation growing up in the age of technology. So he, he he's right with his granddad when he does it. So, But I want to get back to the point. So the NBA has never celebrated mediocrity. If you were not a team that were in the top four of each division, it didn't matter. You just went home. But now we see something called a play-in tournament. And because the NBA lost so much money last year, and now TV companies want to reclaim or get some of that money back. So what has to happen now, the NBA is exploiting what they never took advantage of, and that's this draft class, and that's other things. What do I mean? You have teams now with an under 500 record going into the NBA play-in tournament, possibly being, beating a team, which is over 500, sending them home, and moving on. That's mediocrity. What you're doing, you're allowing the teams who did not qualify to get in a position to play those teams who did qualify, and it's when they throw the spaghetti up the, uh, uh, off the wall, whoever sticks. That's wrong. That's wrong. If you didn't celebrate LaMelo Ball in the beginning, why do it now? Why? Because they can make money on it. 
and that's something that's critical. So that's when I look at it right now, I'm going to show you the subliminal. If you look in the last, say, week and a half, Charlotte has lost four games, right? Four games. That's bad. According to NBA standards, 10 years ago, that's bad. A four-game losing streak. But from a subliminal message to the fan, everywhere you look, it's Charlotte has clinched the playoffs. Wait a minute. How do you clinch playoffs and you're losing? Are you beginning to get it? Someone is celebrating mediocrity because they want to bring about what? Exploitation. Celebrating mediocrity to bring about expectations through exporting players and teams. And guess what? Some of these under 500 coaches that should be fired at this point are still coaching because of the play-in tournament. It's like everyone has a past that we don't know about, but if you really look at it, you can see what's going on. So I'm telling you, this is something I want you to take note of. Watch this. Let's look at the definition of exploitation. It says make full use of and, and, and benefit from subjects and other groups. And I'm going to add something to it. Based on manipulation. LaBello Ball in this class were not supposed to be anything. The NBA found out they had something. Now they're exploiting it. That's why they wanted LaBello Ball to be in the All-Star Challenge. And he said no, because they were looking to exploit him to make money. You better get this. It's done all throughout America. Walmart did it in that system of economics. They shut everybody down, and Walmart became an economics class subject. Why? Because the way that they structured things, and they did it. The NBA is doing the same thing. That's why LeVar Ball can never be welcomed into their classism and their understanding, because he doesn't fit the narrative from the perspective of who and what he is. I'm going to leave that there. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the next definition. I want you to go with me now. Check this out. Me mediocrity by definition, the quality of the state so of the being NBA saying, saying now, listen, we're going to put mediocrity in front of you. But when we look at the number and the analytics, anywhere and anytime LaMelo Ball plays, even though they're not under 500, the team is drawing numbers whereby we can enhance and increase revenue, especially for the TV station, ESPN, and all sports, uh, all these players, I mean, all these platforms now who are paying the NBA. This is a way to pay them back. Let me go get closer to the mic. This is a way through exploitation to pay those revenues back to those individuals that gen generated during the pandemic. Hey, I, I don't know what to say from there, but I, I hope you understand where we're going tonight. And this is what I do. I, so after I take care of the family and I study the word of God, um, I, I'm, I, I go into wanting to understand how things work and how things operate. And when I'm seeing this, I kept seeing that subliminal message. The um, Charlotte Hornets has clinched the playoffs. But wait a minute. Didn't they just lose four games in a row? That's mediocrity, way under 500. Oh, it's a subliminal to get you turned in and excited to draw economics so the NBA can recoup what they lost. And then all these healthy contracts, um, the teams can recoup. You're going to put a bad market team on the floor, throwing spaghetti against the wall, and have us say, Woo, that was great. Man, we appreciated seeing Kawhi and, and Paul George kick the Hornets butt. No, 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 no. Put the best teams on the floor and let them go at it. But this, these type of things are what we have to be aware of because they make a difference. You're just not hurting the owners. You're hurting players. LaMelo Ball needs to rest. Yes, I would love to see him in the playoffs, but he needs to rest. There's a lot of injured NBA players this year because there was no true training camps. Some of these cats need to rest or it's, it's going to be over with for them. Some injuries they won't heal from. You see what's going on? 
Not an extended season. Yes, you know that. But guess what? Mediocrity is at the front line of exploitation. I want to say thank you to all those who tune in with Big J. I'm not Stephen A. Smith. I'm not on the jump. I'm not on ESPN. But what I want to do is bring you conducive content that represents sports, news, and information. If you don't like it, I respect that also. But if you do and you favor what's going on here, please smash that like button. After you do that, leave a comment and support. Tell us what I could have said different or added to it. If you have not subscribed yet, we're almost at 2,000 subs. All right? At 2,000 subs, help us get there. Our watch hours have increased. It's almost like we're a TV station. And that's only given because of what you do. Really, it is, not me. I, I only put things together. And by the way, before we close out, someone says, Big J, um, who do you use or who do you pay to do all your content creation and everything and logos and banners? I do it all myself. I do it all myself. I don't have a problem getting on YouTube and studying. I don't have a problem studying apps. The brightest community right now are, are teenagers between the age of 16 and, say, 18. They have a vast knowledge of how technology works. And I would be crazy not to study what they're doing because it does work. Everything you see on the screen, everything you see on the channel, everything I do myself. Don't pay for anything. I don't pay for anyone. It's all done. What I don't understand, I study until I understand it and bring it into fruition. But you know what? You know what I'm about to say. It's time to get out of here. But you know I got to say one thing. And I'm going to be real. This is all I'm going to say. Be the best and the best you will become. God bless. Have an amazing day, afternoon, and evening. Until next time.